hello 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 welcome on tonight blessings and favor to you all just wanted to come on for a little while like i always say just coming on sharing uh with you all on tonight and so um let me know if you see the live amen amen thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you praise the lord hallelujah blessings and favor Blessings and favor, blessings and favor, blessings and favor. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's see. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Blessings and favor. Thank you all for coming on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessings and favor. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, blessings and favor. Thank you all for coming on on tonight. Hallelujah, just coming on and to share. Hallelujah. Um, some things on tonight that was um just laid upon on my heart um pertaining to um the Travis um Scott concert. And I'm not really coming on to um as far as like shining light on the concert in itself. I'm not coming on to talk about just the, the different um, things that we've been seeing in the news. I'm not coming on to talk about um, the, um, just the different symbolics and how uh, various ones has probably, you know, has really been um, speaking upon um, um, the, the music in itself, what the music calls and, and the um, types of demons that is attached to um, to different um, music that we know. And, and some people, I would say, I'm not gonna say that we know because some people are not really, um, really don't have the understanding, so to speak, of what really um, music, what's behind certain types of music. And so that's not really the area in which I am coming on and talking about on tonight, but I am specifically coming on, talking about the areas of, if you see me looking down on my, 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 um, looking down and looking at my phone, but the area that I'm really coming on to target tonight is, is talking about different regions. And the regions of, um, of, especially when it comes to us being um, apostles, us being prophets, us being intercessors, that's the area that I want to target on tonight because a lot of times what we see that's happening in different regions and, and, and happening, um, the manifestations of certain things take place. And the reason why we see certain things is because of, um, of us not really interceding I'm um, not really being in um, the place that we are supposed to be in, as um, especially as us as being um, being ones that walk in. I would say walk in going from regions and, and especially. And the, the one thing that I do want to say about this area here is that as far as being an apostle, being a prophet, and although I've been talking a lot about the areas of abuse, this is not the area I'm going to be talking on tonight. I'm coming in a whole total different uh, vein. And what I'm discussing on tonight. And so um, one area that we have to understand is being apostles and being prophets. And when God began to send us out, we have to understand that the first area that we need to deal with, we need to deal with ourselves. I'm going to I'm talk, going to a certain place on tonight. I'm going to a certain um, area on. But um, but uh, what usually happens is that we have a tendency to always focus on the manifestation of a thing but we never go into the depths of, of things of why certain things occur how certain things get into our region how certain things is um we don't get into the whole depth of the why of of because of, we deal a lot with things that's on the surface and i know a lot of people is not going to like this on tonight because what we want to do we always want to focus on what happened what happened in 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 the world standpoint because we have to understand something we have to understand that you know we cannot keep on and tank keep entangling ourselves 
in the things of the world and expect for us to get the results that we are supposed to, that we're looking for to be manifested as far as kingdom. And so that's why, you know, being able to come on and being able to talk in this in this area of, of us first, we talk about, oh, we have to we have to shine light on how certain things happen, how um, how the manifestation of something took place, how um, how um, looking at the, 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 the spiritual standpoint of how these how certain types of demons are manifested. But the truth of the matter is, is that if we cannot target certain areas in the spirit realm until unless we are first blessings, baby, thank you for coming on until we first deal with us first, as far as in the body of Christ, and especially us as, as moving in the apostolic and moving as apostles and moving at, as prophets. And so I'm going to lay a little bit of foundation down first before I get into actually talking about what happened at the concert. And like I said, again, I'm not coming. I'm not coming on. It's really talk about the concert because that's not even really my focal point. But my focal point is really talking about regions and how we as apostles and prophets, how we don't understand the whole the whole measure of when God really talked to us about making sure that we keep ourselves in a pure place and especially as intercessors because we have to understand something. We have to understand that you cannot go into a region and try to break down and cast down and tear down if you're if you're operating in it yourself and so of course we know that it was a lot of manifestation of a witchcraft but one thing we have to, one thing again i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and just break it on down usually what happens especially in houston because i've been to houston and because i have discerned certain things in houston and many people don't know and yes we may talk about certain areas that we may have that we may be privy of but I'm coming on to talk about the area that I am um, have been made privy, have been made privy of in the spirit realm of what God has revealed to me, and it, and what an area that many people don't know about Houston. One thing many people don't know about Houston is that it's a breeding ground for witches. It's a breeding ground for witchcraft. It's a heavy level of witchcraft that goes on in the area of Houston. So it's a more of an underground layer that we're not even targeting in the body of Christ. But one thing we always target, blessings and favor, thank you for coming on. One thing we always target. And we talk, we take the manifestation of the thing, but we don't go into the root of really what's, what's happening in the ground. And I remember some years ago, it was an apostle, maybe like 12 years ago, and I remember one thing she taught me. She, she always used to call me Prophet Max. She said, Prophet Max is in, is, um, is in the land. The land always speaks. The land always speaks. And so, you know, one thing we have to understand is that when something is manifested, it's what's going on in the land. It's not so much in, oh my God, this thing has, has, has come about. This is what, you know, the news spread or what the news spread is saying. And yes, you know, we have to cry out for, for those families that have suffered, you know, the victims in this particular incident. However, we still have to go into the depths of why certain things are taking place. And that's the area, again, that area is a breeding ground of witchcraft. And a lot of, a lot of people, I'm not going to say a lot of people, but many in that particular area, many in that particular area is under the radar. And yes, they may appear on the surface as if they are, they are apost apostles, if that's what I'm going to go into, why we have to deal with us first in the body of Christ. Because there's many that are pretending to be apostles and prophets in that region, but they are not prophets and prophets. There's actually warlocks, witches and warlocks that's operating in that region. And so if you have a over, a, when you have certain areas that's operating like this under the radar, that's pretending that's not being shut down. That's why it's important for us to really, to really get into the presence of of God and allow him to reveal and expose these things in the spirit realm because many of us and I'm just going to talk about it many of us even on social media we're liking people posts we're 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 um we're sharing people posts we share people lives because they're apostles because they're prophets we don't even know who we who they are in the spirit realm and what we're doing is that we we automatically assume that they are uh, prophets and apostles why because they have it on their profile but we have to get into the place of saying God 
God, who is this individual that's speaking? What is their lifestyle behind closed doors? Because just because somebody said that they are a prophet or apostle, that does not mean that their life is clean. And we have to come away from just saying, God, okay, yeah, this person, the apostle, oh my God, yes, Lord, they, they're speaking what thus said the Lord. But we need to get, again, we need to get into the place we need to get into that place and saying, God, reveal to me what is going on behind the scenes. And if you have a pure heart before God, guess what? God is going to open up your eyes to what people are doing behind the scenes. And a lot of people are doing witchcraft behind the scenes. They're doing sorceries behind the scenes. They're doing seances behind the scenes. And they're, and, and they're even projecting. Come on here, somebody. They're even projecting into people's lives. And I mean, you know, I, and I, I had to get this some years ago because when the Holy Spirit started really revealing this to me, I was like, God, you know, when when did a when did a prophet, quote unquote, or or an apostle start projecting? You know, and, and you're supposed to be a prophet, you're supposed to be an apostle. You know, you're not supposed to be actually projecting. You're not supposed to be operating in those areas if we call ourselves apostles and prophets. You know, yes, again, I do understand that God takes us into different, God, let me say that again, God takes us into different areas and reveals certain things. And yes, we we travel in the spirit realm when the Holy Spirit, he, he causes us to travel in the spirit realm to be able to see certain things, to be able to um, to discern. And, to, and the reason why God does that with us is so that, especially if you are strong intercessor, if you're one who intercedes, this message is also for you. So, you know, God will take you into the spirit realm to reveal certain things to you and then for you to be able to pray and intercede and shut things down in the spirit realm. But God does not allow us to project, to archer project. That is witchcraft. That is, that is, that is, um, that is incantations, that's witchcraft, that's, div that's walking in divination, and God does not allow us to walk in witchcraft, nor does he allow us to walk in divination. So again, we have to understand that when certain things take place in a region, we have to first check those that are in that, what, God, what is going on in that region? We have to ask, always ask God why. I'm always that individual that asks God why when certain things take place in a certain region, and especially the reason why I am talking about this area as well, too, is again, because I travel to certain areas and God reveal, when God reveal and open up things to me, then when I go back into, when I see certain things and God be like, I want you to speak on that because you've been there, because you've seen certain things that have taken place in the spirit realm in that area. And, and again, another thing about that area also is that because of there's a, a heavy level of trafficking, and you know I was going to get into the whole level of trafficking because, you know, God reveals areas uh, as well in that particular area when it comes to abuse. But there's a heavy level of trafficking that is down in that particular area. And so again, when we start seeing certain things, and, and another thing I want to say is this. Hallelujah. Blessing. Thank you for coming on. The other thing I want to say is this. Is we have to pay attention when people say certain things or they launch certain things in this, when they launch certain things openly. When we talk about fasting and praying, Talk about, let me say this. We talk about fasting and praying. And God have you hid. God have you hid. One thing the scripture talks about about fasting is this, is that we don't sound the alarm when we're fasting. True intercessors, we don't sound the alarm when we're fasting. But the scripture tells us what we do when he sees in secret, he rewards openly. So we don't make an announcement, especially openly, or on social media publicly. We don't let people know when we're, when we're fasting. We don't even let people know what we're fasting about. Those things we keep hid. Why? We keep hid because, because those things is what God sees in secret. And that's how the enemy is able to launch certain attacks because we expose certain areas that God tell us not to expose blessings and favor. Thank you for coming on. We expose certain areas that God does not tell us to expose because we want to be seen. Some of us just want to be seen. Some of us want to be seen as being spiritual. But if you truly operating under the radar that God has you to operate in and to really go in into different places and regions, you're not going to sound the alarm. 
We have to come away from telling everything that God is having us to do. We on assignment. When we when God gives us an assignment, we have to stop getting on social media and telling people, oh, I'm headed to the next state. I'm headed to the next region. Y'all pray for me. Listen, everybody on Facebook is not your friend. There's people that's on your on your pages that are there as monitoring spirits. They're there to watch you. They're there to watch your every movement. And so you post certain things that you're going, that you're leaving from one region and you move it to another region, you're opening up a whole wind of warfare against you long before you get there. So there are certain things that you have to keep under the radar. And this is something that I teach a lot of times to apostles that you have to stop sounding the alarm and telling everybody, oh, I'm going, I'm going to this different state. We're living in an hour and a time now where everything has to be kept quiet. They're not saying that it has to be kept quiet in the area of, of you trying to be um subtle and stuff, because you know we got them too that say they, you know, they're moving in silence, but we already know what kind of moving in silence they're doing. But at the same time, it's like we really have to be able to, to quiet ourselves. This comes in a place of humility. This comes in a place of being humble under the mighty hand of God. And the scripture says that when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and do see that he'll take us up. But a lot of things that we do, we do it out of pride. We do it because we want to appear like we're on a level that really we're truly not. And so that's how a lot of us get knocked down in the spirit realm because we're operating in a grace that God never called us to operate in or we operate in a grace that God has not called us to operate in as of yet. And so there is what you call a timing to everything in God. And it's, and it's a such thing that's called a timing and how we move and how we flow in God. So we have to begin to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And we see this in the beginning of Acts. We see how the apostles, before the apostles was launched out, guess what? They had to go up into the upper room. They had to wait for instructions before they can go out. So they had to go out with power. They couldn't go out in their own intellect. They couldn't go out in pride. They, had, they couldn't go out in, 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 in arrogance. They had to go out as they was instructed. And the thing about it, the Holy Spirit told them which areas to go into. That's another thing that we have to learn, as, as, especially as apostles and prophets, is that we have to learn what regions am I called to. There are certain regions we're not called to go in. There's some regions that, that some of us that get our backs go up if we go into those particular regions because we don't have the grace for it. And not only don't we have the grace for it, but some of us don't even walk in a level of purity in order to go into those different regions anyway. Because one thing about going into certain regions is that if you don't walk in purity, come on here, somebody, you have to be able to walk in purity in order to be able to shut things down. You can't shut things down if you're operating in it yourself. If you're operating in witchcraft, you can't go into another region and shut down. Um, you can't shut down witchcraft in that particular region. If you're walking in pride, you can't go into that, that, that region and shut down um, the principality of Leviathan that's operating in that region. Why? Because you're 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 in covenant with that principality. You're in covenant with it. And especially when it comes to different areas of soul ties, um, um, sexual soul ties. That's another. So if you see in a region that a region is dealing with um, a great level of, of perversion, a great level of pride, a great level of witchcraft, those are certain areas. And I'm just I'm just making this three, these three areas. But that's not the whole totality. But there are certain areas that you have to make sure yourself, you have to go to the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important that we stay before God. That's why it's important that we stay pure before God so God can break off these areas in our lives. And again, when you get to go into different regions, before you go into a different region, you have to go through a process first. You have to go through a cleansing process first. We have to go through a cleansing process. Always go through a cleansing process. When you come, when you come off an assignment, go through a cleansing process. There are periods that we have to understand of, of the rest periods that apostles and prophets take and intercessors. That we have to learn how to take those quiet moments that we have to come away. We can't travel all the we can't be on the go all the time and never taking a pull back. The pullback is so necessary. I'm going to read your comments after I, um, I come out. 
but the, um um the 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 process of going through those those deliverance processes before you be launched out into your next is vital is key is how to to really be effective as as of as a, um, as one that operate in the grace and understand there's some that's not called to to travel there's some that's not called to go into different regions like you may have certain uh, you may have pastors and pastors you know they're they're set in a certain location we understand that and we understand you know the areas of, of even when it called um it, the area of evangelism i'm going to talk about these areas and um i may i'm not going to get into really talking about the depths of those areas on tonight i want to stay in the area of talking about us being as far as being apostles and prophets and and um an intercessor because again god would take you into different regions in order to be able to shut down certain things that goes on but we have to we have to come away from we have to come away from not going through the areas of deliverance we have to come away from not uh not coming not getting before the lord before we take on other assignments god is not going to give continue to give us assignments but we're not walking in purity period and i cannot express that enough we may talk about purity as far as um a marriage covenant we may talk about purity as far as um being um being pure before marriage but it's a it's a greater depth to your purity what it means to walk in a, to walk and have a clean life before god if we're going to really be effective in this hour if we're really going to walk in the glory and to be marked by the glory of God, to really do damage to Satan's kingdom, we have to walk in purity. We have to, if there's areas that's in your life that, that is a witchcraft, you have to ask the Holy Spirit, God, show me these areas. Show me these areas that I, that I may have some type of attachments. Some people are still, even though they're in the body of Christ, they're still attached to a cult, the world of a cult. You know, they still, you know, they're still doing um, incantations. You know, and this is not supposed to be in the body of Christ. This is not supposed to be amongst amongst us that, that we call saints. You know, so and, and that's really going into operating in the flesh. But we got to come away from that. We got to ask God to deliver us from those particular areas. And again, that's also going to let me let me talk about this while I'm while I'm talking about this area of um a witchcraft. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how witchcraft ended up getting in. One re one way witchcraft ended up getting in, especially amongst prophets. Especially amongst prophets, we come into the church. People born again, they come into the church, and instead of them going through the going through a deliverance, we go ahead and we hand them a mic. We lay hands on them, throw some oil on them. Say so casting out whatever demons or whatever, and we're ready to hand them a mic. And then we're ready to prophesy them to nations. But we give God enough time to do the work that needs to be done in that individual. And so that's why we have all this witchcraft that's end up in, 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 in different areas of the church because we're putting people in places that there have not yet been deliverance have not yet been deliverance and i talk about things when i talk about certain things and i bring certain things up that's because i've seen it in the church i don't talk about anything that i haven't seen i don't talk about anything that i have not experienced so i talk about this area from the area of of what i have observed we don't give people enough time we don't give god enough time to do a work in the individual before they're released, before they get any kind of platform. And yes, some people may say, well, you just, you know, you can't hold people back. That's not holding people back. And I take this even in my own experience. And I understand that everybody may not have this, this level of experience. I understand it. However, I'm going to share it now. But I remember even in the beginning when I came all the way into the kingdom. The first thing God began to do, God began to strip me of everything that was of the world. Before I was handed a mic, before I did my initial sermon to end up in ministry, God had me on a three-year purging, a three-year purging. And yes, I may have done certain 
areas in the church that, you know, certain different things, secretarial work, but as far as anything else being done in, no, God didn't allow me to put my hands in it until it was time for me to, until it was time, until I was totally delivered and totally set free. You can't stand before, we, we, we can't stand before people not walking in purity. We do it, we do we do the kingdom a disservice. We do people a disservice when we don't walk in purity. And we have, again, we have to come away from just laying hands on people. The word tells us not to suddenly lay hands. We are not to suddenly lay hands on people and releasing them into ministry. It has nothing to do about who we are. You know, when we, when we, we, we want to make, we want everybody to say, Oh my God, apostles so and so, they just over there just doing so much. They, you know, they were they just you know ordaining a lot of people, they're just releasing a whole lot of people. Blessings and favor. Thank you for coming on. You know, we want we want to be able to be looked at as somebody that's doing the work of um doing just great work. But no, sometimes you have to allow people, allow God to deal in the hearts of people so people can truly go through their period of deliverance in the timing that God wants them to go through. And that's and it's also talking about making making disciples, discipling. Some of us really have experienced what it truly means to go through discipling. And that's not always um sitting under somebody's teaching. It's not always sitting under or going to a class. That's not no that's not that's not always true discipleship. You going through God's discipleship, you gonna go through the process. <laughs> you gonna go through the process. And so again, not coming on a shining light per se on the concert in itself. That's not really where my focal point is. But my focal point is truly talking about the us in the kingdom and talking about regions and how we are supposed to operate and when certain things take place to this extent. When we see deaths that's taking place, listen, earlier today, you know, I really, I really was not going to come on to do this live, but it was just so much in depth in my spirit because again, this is not the end of these things that's taking place. Unfortunately, this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning of what we are getting ready to see and more that we get ready to see. But God wants us to be in a place of preparation. He wants us to begin to be, to get back into the place. And I was reading a post and I shared it on my page earlier. Some of you commented on, um, commented on this particular area um, of, of the post that I, I, I shared earlier from another apostle. Um, I um, can't remember his last name, but Apostle Oscar, I really, I really enjoy his ministry. But um, I was sharing um, his post earlier when he was talking about the different um, gates and and so forth, and, and the, the vision and the dream of, of what the things that God had revealed to him. I'm just saying it like that. And it really struck in my heart because I said, God, where are we? Where are we as the body? Where are we um, as where we should be? Why are we not in position? Why are we not in the place that you're that you are telling us that we need to be in? And and really, this is not where God just now started to speak to us. God been speaking to us. God been speaking to us for a minute. And there are certain things that's even taking place now. God spoke to God spoke these things to me about 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Five years ago. God began to just reveal certain things that was taking place, that was going to take place in the land. But what many of us, many of us have done, we have ignored warnings those that have sound the alarm, those that have been sounding the alarm for some time because we're so stuck on who wants to be the greatest among us? Who want to be the one to appear to be so great? We are we stuck on who's going to have the greatest platform? We're stuck on who is going to, who's, who's going to, you know, whose name is going to be great. But understand something, if God don't make your name great, your name is not going to be great. Come on here. This takes something that it takes God to make your name great. It takes God to bring you on platforms. The scripture even tells us that God, the scripture said God resists the proud, but he give grace to the humble. And that he is the one that does, he does the promoting. He sit down one and he put up another. 
It's not us ourselves. We don't exalt ourselves. We don't raise ourselves up. That is the work of the Lord. We don't, we don't raise up people. That's the work of the Lord. When God tells us to do a thing, we are to do what God tells us to do with humility, not with pride, not with arrogance. We have to begin to get back into the place of being humble before God and allowing us again, allow, uh, allowing us to see into certain things so that we can be able to strategize. We got to walk in strategy. Learn how to walk in strategy in this hour. Learn how to walk in wisdom. Learn how to be quiet about certain things that God is revealing. There's certain things that God is revealing in the spirit realm that we have to stay quiet about until God really tells us to speak on that thing or when to release it. Because again, when God tells us to release a thing, God is God gives us the grace to be able to handle the level of warfare that comes along with what we are releasing, the level of warfare. That's why it's important to walk in the timings of God and not to go ahead of God. And if God is not calling you to deal on certain areas, don't touch it. Leave it alone. Don't allow pride to get in. Because some of us touch things that God never ordained for us to touch. But allow God to lead us into these areas so that we can be effective, effective in this hour, effective. And there's no way, there's no way, especially in, 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 in when you're in a certain region and when certain things happen, if anybody should know, again, if we're in the spirit realm and you know, I'm always asking the Holy Spirit to reveal certain things to me, but I understand what I walk in as well. I understand what I walk in. However, we have to understand something is this. We have to understand that God reveals. He revealed things before they happen. That's another area I tell people that I'm not about reaction. I'm about how, how, did this, how did this happen and how can we prevent this from happening again? And not only that, I'm also that kind of person because I believe if you truly walking as a prophet, you're truly going to see things before they happen. And a lot of times people prophesy things after it happened when we supposed to be prophesying before it happened. Come on. I believe in, in, in that preventative maintenance, you know, and because the word tells us that he show us things to come. He reveals to us secrets. So we need to get into that place. And how do we get into that place? We get into that place by being in the secret place of the most high. Psalms 91, we dwell in the secret place of the most high. When we dwell in the secret place, God is able to reveal secrets. He's able to show us those things that's taking place in the region. He's able to show us those things that we, that we need to be privy of and being able to shut certain things down in the region. But again, if we ourselves are entangled, if we ourselves are entangled in witchcraft and divination, if we ourselves are entangled, in perversion, if we ourselves are entangled in pride, we will not be able to see anything, anything that's coming. We'll remain blinded to it. Why? Because we're operating in it. Again, you can't shut down something that you're operating in yourself. And, I, and that's another area I always tell people about covenant, knowing what you're in covenant with, what doors are opening your life and allowing the Holy Spirit Allowing the Holy Spirit to deal with these areas. Allowing him to deal with these areas. So again, just coming on and shedding light in this area on tonight. Um, just really asking, you know, the just the people of God, you know, again, ask the Holy Spirit. God, what area do I play? What area am I assigned to in this hour, in this time that we're in? Because again, these things is what we're seeing is only the beginning. And, you know, I'm not really one to really keep up on certain things of the news, but lately I really have been keeping up on certain things of the news for a reason. However, you know, we have to stay alert, stay alert in this hour. Ask God, God, what's going on in my region? Not just what's going on in my life. I understand, you know, some of us just, you know, we want to really walk into certain things that we and that's our heart desire 
let me say that that's our desire our desire but not god's desire okay so we have to get into that place I have to get into that place of asking god god what is your desire what do you want me to walk in what do you want me to see in this time what are those areas in my life that need to be shut down so that i can walk into the fullness of what you're calling me to walk in so i can be able to see the things that you want me to see that's taking place in the spirit realm and especially again if you're an intercessor make sure that you're walking in an area of, of deliverance stay before the lord and again if god is revealing certain areas and i see this a lot of times where people they're released you know praying and fasting you know pay attention to pay attention to certain things that that people put out there pay attention because a lot of times if you pay attention to it and where they're located and all of a sudden there's things that take place like this in the region ask the holy spirit who is that individual that just put that out there publicly and fasting and praying again we don't put anything out there to, to make publicly known for the enemy to know what we're doing we don't do that the only time that people really is that they're sounding they're sounding a different type of alarm and it's not the alarm from the holy spirit you you can see people there t there's a lot of times people gather they send out an alarm to gather other witches and other warlocks to gather gather in on this fasting gather in on this on this on this uh, on this prayer and some of us don't believe but witches and warlocks they fast too they fast and they pray to satan <laughs> you know so again those are areas that we have to pay attention to we have to understand something in this hour god is revealing and he's exposing the hearts of man he's exposing where people are in the spirit realm and everybody is not where they're claiming that they are in the spirit realm and they're not who they say they are in the kingdom and some of them are not even in the kingdom they're actually working in darkness they're working in the kingdom working for the kingdom of darkness but they have crept in unaware and so again let's discern in this hour and i'm going to share this real quick before i go out i'm going to be back on tomorrow but um i remember some years ago and i shared this before some years ago i was at when i was at my home church and god had taken me up on this um in a dream the lord had taken me up in a spirit realm and i remember hearing the lord say they're going to look like you they're going to sound like you but they're not going to be of you and there was people walking up the sidewalk and they was walking in the church but it wasn't god showing me my home church it was god showing me the church and there are many that have crept in unaware but because of the lack of discerning of spirits because of the lack of discernment we have allowed people to come in that's not even born again and they are in the midst of god's people so again let's begin to have um ask the holy spirit to show us these areas in this hour because it's necessary and this is what keeps the enemy at bay you know of course we go deal with spiritual warfare that's a given you know especially as being born again believers but the scripture also teaches us in ephesians to tell us to put on the whole armor of god that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so we have to put on our whole armor and but again if we're not walking in the purity that god or that god requires us to walk in then when we go into other regions what we're doing we really we're not really setting anything we're not shutting anything down because we're walking in the very thing that is in that region so again let's continue to pray for one another in this hour let's continue to pray for all the all the families that have lost loved ones in this in this tragic accident incident that has taken place and that we continue to pray for you know intercede for the regions intercede for intercede for those that are in your region amen amen so i'll be back on tomorrow 
Amen. I'm um, sharing another live and I will be posting that um, sometime tonight. So again, let's continue to pray for one another. Continue to go to, to the Lord. Continue to inquire of the Lord. Continue to do what God is telling us to do and being um, and being obedient. Just walk in being an obedient, you know, be willing and obedient to the Lord in this hour like never before. Let us break or let pride be broken off of our lives so that we can walk in humility, so that we can see what the enemy is doing. You can't see what the enemy is doing if we're walking in pride. We're walking in pride because there's no grace. Again, God, you know, God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so we have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Thank you all for coming on. I appreciate you all, and I will be seeing you soon. Blessings and favor. Love you. Amen.